Hello, and welcome to the third and final video of the M3 chapter, Further Centers of Mass. Exam question on the screen to review the previous video. Pause this video now if you've got time. Give this a go. A uniform solid is formed by rotating the region enclosed between the curve with equation this, the x-axis, and the line x equals 4, through one complete revolution about the x-axis. So we've got our equation, which looks something like this. It's going to rotate once about the x-axis to form a solid of revolution that looks something like this. It's going from the origin to x equals 4, and the equation is square root x. This is a fairly standard question. Nothing funny going on. We can apply the formula that we had. Integral of a row pi y squared x dx and that came from separating this shape into tiny disks, where pi y squared was the area of the disk, times dx, or delta x, to get the volume of each disk, times by rho to get the mass of each disk, times by x, the x-coordinate of the centre of mass of each disk, divided by the mass of the total shape, which is the sum of each of the individual disk shapes, and that gave us x bar. This is quite a nice question, because we're going to square this to give x, and we can cancel rho and pi. So this simplifies down to the integral of x times x, so x squared on the top, divided by the integral of just x. And we're going from 0 to 4. And then we go ahead and integrate, giving us x cubed over 3, divided by x squared over 2, 0 to 4. And then, although I haven't been doing this much in the examples in this chapter, what we should do at this stage is to put those limits in, like this, so your examiner can see that you're not just using this on your calculator, using the integrating function of your calculator, but that you are going through the process. But then, of course, you can put this on your calculator and get your final answer, which in this case is 8 over 3. So the distance of the centre of mass of the solid from the origin is 8 over 3 units, which is somewhere around about here. In this final video of the chapter, we're going to find the centre of mass of a non-uniform composite body. In M2, we did something very similar. We found the centre of mass of non-uniform laminars by splitting them into multiple uniform pieces, finding the centre of mass for each individual piece using whatever methods we had, and then treating those pieces as if they were particles on a plane we can do exactly the same thing with non-uniform bodies that can be split into multiple uniform pieces. So, for example, if you had this shape here, made up of a cylinder and a cone, and these were made of different materials, let's say the cone is made of metal, and so is maybe four times denser than the cylinder, which perhaps is made of wood, then we just consider these two shapes separately. We know, first of all, that the centre of mass must lie down the axis of symmetry, down the centre of the shape, and for the cylinder, the centre of mass is halfway up at its geometric centre. And for the cone, it's one quarter of the way up, based on work we've done in a previous video. And then we go back to that table that we've been using, that we used a lot in M2, where you've got the cylinder, the cone, and then the combined shape. You find the mass, and in this case it would be the y-coordinate of the centre of mass. You would know this, you would know this, based on previous work. To find the mass, if we've got the densities, let's say, what did I say, four times? This is four times the density of this one. So we call this density rho, and then this one can be four times that. Then to get the mass, you have to do this times the volume. So you also need some volume information if you've been given information on the densities. So you've got the mass of each of these, you've got the y-coordinate of each of these from previous work. And you've got the total mass of this and the thing you're trying to find. What I think is one important difference between this and M2 is here you might be given information on the mass like you were in M2, or you might be given information on the density like I gave the example here. And you've got to be really careful you know which one you've been given. If you've been given information on the mass, let's say the cone is four times the mass of the cylinder, you can put the relative mass in here very easily. This would be m, this would be 4m. But if you've been given the density like this, then you have to multiply that by the volume of each piece in order to get the relative mass. 
So just be clear whether you've been given information on the mass or the density. If it's this, great, put it in. If it's this, then for each piece you have to multiply its relative density by its volume. That's it on the notes. There's only one example in the textbook, so I'll do that and then I'll do an exam question to finish. A uniform solid right circular cone of height 2r and base radius r is joined at its base to the base of a uniform solid hemisphere. The centres of the bases coincide, that means they are at the same point, and their axes are collinear, that means they form one long straight line. The radius of the hemisphere is 2r, so the hemisphere's radius is twice the radius of the cone, so it's going to look a little bit strange. We've got a hemisphere and then the cone. Oh dear, excuse my poor drawing. Where this is r, the radius of the cone, this distance here, the radius of the hemisphere is 2r, and the height of the cone is also 2r. Find the position of the centre of mass of the composite body if the cone has four times the density of the hemisphere. OK, that's exactly what we had on the previous screen. If I say the hemisphere has a density of rho, then the cone has a density four times rho. And because it's a density, to find the mass of each of these, I have to multiply by the volume. So the mass of the hemisphere is equal to rho times 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by 2. So that's 2 thirds pi r cubed. But remember here, the radius is 2 times capital R. So for r cubed there, I've got 2r all cubed. For the mass of the cone, I've got 4 rho times 1 third pi r squared h. And here, r for the cone is just capital R, but h for the cone is 2r. So I've got capital R squared times 2r for the height. So here I've got the mass of each individual piece. I also need now the centre of mass for each of these pieces. And to do this, I'm going to take the centre point here as my origin point. So I'm going to put my axes like this, x here, y here. And I'm going to do it like that because at the end I want to be able to say my centre of mass relative to this centre point here. It's very important to realise, though, a consequence of this means the centre of mass for the hemisphere will be a negative. And that will be negative 3 eighths of r from previous work that we've done. And when I say from previous work that we've done, what I should really be saying is this formula is given in the formula booklet. In the formula booklet, you've got a cone, a conical shell, the hemisphere, and a hemispherical shell. So we're OK to use these results without proving them. Unless, of course, the question is asking you to prove it. So the centre of mass here will be minus 3r over 8, but the radius of the hemisphere is 2r in this case. The centre of mass for the cone we know is 1 quarter of the height, 1 quarter of h, but we know h is 2 times r. Now I've got all the information I need, the mass and the centre of mass coordinate for the cone, the mass and the centre of mass coordinate for the hemisphere, I can make my table. Got the cone here, hemisphere here, and the final shape over here. Mass and y coordinate, where this is y bar, the thing we're trying to find. For the mass of the cone, simplifying that expression slightly, we've got 8 thirds rho pi r cubed and the centre of mass r over 2. For the hemisphere, 16 over 3 rho pi r cubed and the centre of mass negative 3r over 4. These expressions are very similar, so when I add them together for the total mass here, I've got 8 thirds of this plus 16 thirds of this gives me a total of 8 rho pi r cubed. And then we do what we always do with the table, this times this plus this times this equals this times this. Simplifying as we go, that gives us 4 rho pi r to the 4 over 3 minus 4 rho pi r to the 4 is equal to 8 
rho pi r cubed y bar. Pi and rho cancel in each of the terms, as does the r cubed here with power fours there. Four thirds minus four is minus eight over three times r is equal to eight y bar. Divide through by eight gives us the final answer. Y bar is equal to minus one third of r. So the center of mass of the shape is one sixth of the radius of the hemisphere downwards. To finish off this chapter, a final exam question. A child's toy consists of a uniform solid hemisphere attached to a uniform solid cylinder. The plane face of the hemisphere coincides with the plane face of the cylinder as shown in figure three. The cylinder and the hemisphere each have radius r and the height of the cylinder is h. The material of the hemisphere is six times as dense, so we're talking about density again, as the material of the cylinder. Let me put that on straight away. The hemisphere is six times as dense as the cylinder. The toy rests in equilibrium on a horizontal plane with the cylinder above the hemisphere and the axis of the cylinder vertical. Show that the distance d of the centre of mass of the toy from its lowest point, O, is given by this. Okay, I will take O as my origin point to coincide with what they've said there. However, I need to be very careful with the centre of mass of the hemisphere. Normally I would call it 3 eighths of R from the centre point, so from O it will be 5 eighths of R up the y-axis. Let me put that on now before I forget. 5 eighths of R for the centre of mass of the hemisphere. For the cylinder, it's at its geometric centre, which is the full radius of the hemisphere plus half of h. So we've got r plus h over 2 for the centre of mass of the cylinder. Now let's consider the mass of each. We've got the densities, or the relative densities. Now we need to multiply them by the volume to get the mass. Volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h, and the volume of the hemisphere, as we had in the previous example, is two-thirds pi r cubed. So again, I've got my four bits of information that I need, the masses and the center of masses of the two separate pieces I'm going to use. On to the table. We've got mass here, and again we're using the y-coordinate. So we've got the cylinder, the hemisphere, and then the full shape. Mass of the cylinder, rho pi r squared h, center of mass, r plus h over 2. Mass of the hemisphere, 4 rho pi r cubed, and the center of mass, 5 over 8 r. And I've just realized I've used a capital R over here, where it should be a little r. And then the mass of the total shape, we've got rho pi r squared as common to the two expressions. And then we've got h plus 4 r. Normally I would call the y-coordinate of the center of mass of the full shape y-bar, but because they've given us the distance d, and where I've put my origin point, d will be the center of mass coordinate, so I'm just going to go ahead and call this d straight away. I've set everything up. Now for the equation. Rho pi r squared h times r plus h over 2. 5 over 2 rho pi r to the 4 is equal to rho pi r squared h plus 4r times d. Rho pi and r squared can cancel from each. And if I expand out this bracket in the first term, we get hr plus h squared over 2 plus 5r squared over 2 equals h plus 4r times d. And then if I just make this 2 over 2 there, we can put this together to give 5r squared plus 2hr plus h squared all over 2 equals h plus 4r d. And then we just need to divide through and we get the expression we need. Part A finished, but there is a part B. When the toy is placed with any point of the curved surface of the hemisphere resting on the plane, it will remain in equilibrium. Find h in terms of r. This is quite an interesting question, because you have to realize what this information is giving you. When the toy is placed with any point of the curved surface of the hemisphere 
resting on the plane, it will remain in equilibrium. Remember, it will remain in equilibrium if the center of mass of the shape is directly above the point of contact. That means anywhere on this hemisphere, if we put that as the point of contact with the ground, the center of mass must be directly above it. Otherwise, it would not be in equilibrium. The only point the center of mass can be then is at the very center of the flat surface of the hemisphere. That's the only point that will stay where it is as you change the point of contact of the hemisphere with the plane. So for this to be true, we must have d is equal to the radius of the hemisphere, r. That's the key point here. This information is telling you d equals r. Once you've realized that, the question is quite easy. You just have to put r for d here and then rearrange to get h in terms of r from that equation. So this equals r. So if I expand this and multiply it over onto this side, what we get is 5r squared plus 2hr plus h squared is equal to 2h times r, 2hr, plus 8r times r, 8r squared. The 2hrs cancel. 5r squared can move on to the right. So that leaves us with the expression h squared is equal to 3r squared square root on both sides and realizing that as a distance they must be positive, we've got h is equal to the square root of 3 times r. And that is the final answer for part b to finish this chapter. I hope that's enough for you now to have a go at exercise 5c and also the chapter 5 review exercise. Maybe I'll see you for chapter 6.